What if I told you that you should avoid mocking third-party code and that by doing so, you are improving your design? But before seeing how, we first need to talk about what is third-party code. Third-party code is all those API clients, database connections, other vendor products, all those libraries that usually you will install to perform a given task, like connecting to a different system. And that last part that I told you is really important because we should only use mocking for those boundaries of our system. And obviously, as .NET developers, I'm not talking about being independent of the framework itself. The lack of control that we have over that third-party code presents challenges on our design in the way that we integrate with an external component. And those challenges are mostly related to the balance that we need to achieve between the specificity of our code and the abstraction level of that component, because libraries are developed to be widely used in a several scenarios. So there's a gap, a mismatch between what we want and what those libraries give us and we need to find a way to match those two. And what is the impact of mocking that third-party code? To show you that, I have here two simple examples, one using an API and another one using a database. I have found some code online with this problem that we are trying to address here today, and I brought that code into here and I made some slight adjustments. By the way, if you want to grab this source code, you can do it as a patron. We have here a net product method that will be responsible to do some validations on top of product, nothing special, and then we'll directly call the DB connection, create a command, send the text, add parameters, and execute the command. This source code is directly using the IDB connection. So in production, it will, can be using something like SQL Server connection. Since I have the IDB connection, that means that when I'm testing this source code, I can simply go here and mock the IDB connection and the IDB command and do all those things that I need to do, all that setup to have a, a proper test working. So in a simple test like this one, that is checking if a product is added to the database, I will, if I want to mock that third-party code, I need to do all that setup and then define my verifies. And this is the case of a database connection. Let's talk about HTTP clients because that one is pretty common to see due to all the difficulties that I have to mock a, an HTTP client. It's common to see people asking how to do it. So on the side, I have here a, a similar example to add a product, we'll do some validations. And then what I'm doing here is setting my request, defining the string content, serializing, and using my HTTP client factory, creating a new client and doing a, a post. And if we go into our tests, we'll see that once again, I have here a lot of things that I need to do to set up and arrange my test so I can ensure that I was able to do that call to the API. Those are two examples that have the same type of problems of mocking third-party code. And what problems are there? The simple fact of trying to mock that third-party code will lead me to a lot of complexity on my tests. There's an abstraction level on that library that I'm using that demands me a lot of configurations to define what I want to do. So that will lead to an arrange of your tests too big to understand, to be difficult to maintain, and it's hard to express all those things. Besides that, one thing that may happen is that when you, for example, upgrade that library, sometimes it may cause you to fail some of those tests, all because now your mock expectations should define an extra thing or there was a rename there, things that you don't want to do on a test that arguably will be testing, for example, an application service. And the other problem that I see with mocking third-party code is that even when writing this code, if I start feeling that this is too complex, that it's hard to express what I want on that contract, I can do nothing about it. I can't change that source code to improve the design. Okay, it's, it's not mine. And if you believe in the power of writing tests to improve your design, this thing will not help you. Basically, we will carry complexity either on our tests and also in our code due to the fact that we can't fix anything regarding this third-party code. And when you look into this test, it's pretty clear the mismatch between the abstraction level of that library, on this case, the HTTP client, and the specificity that my product processor 
needs on my source code. So what should we do to address this problem? There's a rule of thumb for that. Don't mock what you don't own. And if we don't want to mock what we don't own, on this example of the HTTP call, what should we do if the product processor depends on the HTTP client itself? The answer is simple. It's basically ports and adapters. We will need to introduce an adapter layer that will bridge between our code, the specificity of our code, and the abstraction of that third-party code. Let's refactor this one to see how. Let's start by rewriting our tests. I will throw away all the source code regarding mocking the HTTP client, and I will start to daydream how I imagine that adapter layer. Let's say that is something as simple as this for now. I wanted my API adapter as an add the sync method. That method will receive a product and it will return through on this case. From this, I can now start to extract that iProduct API. I will do it and I have it here. Obviously, I will have here also a cancellation token, all those things. Instead of using an is any, I will try to check if the data matches what I'm expecting, all those kind of things. But before we keep going, let me do the last thing that I want to do here. And we review the verify to ensure that in fact, that product that I'm looking for, that I'm trying to add, was sent to the API once. And now let's update the source code of that product processor to use this new contract and see how the code will look like. Instead of having the constructor, the HTTP client factory, I will now have my adapter. So all that source code that I have here will need to move to the implementation of that adapter itself. And it's something pretty simple to do. We implement the interface, we create the constructor, receiving the IHTP client factory that we already have on that service and we copy all that source code into the add the sync method. So now when I'm running this in production, I can inject this adapter to that interface. Getting back into our service, so now we just need to call the adapter. So I will call that adapter, providing the product, await for the result. Since now that contract is returning a true or false, if it was successful or not, and in the past, this method used to throw an exception if there was a problem. Let's say that I would return here an exception. Obviously, we would use proper exception types or ideally we would not either throw an exception here, return it and return the proper response. This is just an example. So let's see if that test is succeeding and it's green. So perfect. And this simplified the definition of that test, but also improved the design of our processor. But now before you start complaining, let me address the obvious question. The previous test was testing more code than this one. This one is just checking that API contract. Everything that I was doing there to define, for example, a SQL command or an HTTP client request, it's not being tested now. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't test that one, but I would prefer to write unit tests on this type of code that I showed you and leave integration tests for those thin adapters that you will define. So this product API adapter that has all that source code that we moved into here should be as thin as possible. It will work as a translation layer and it can be tested through integration tests. And by doing it through integration tests, will gain even more value than tests that we were doing because we were just checking the contract itself and mocking the expected behavior of that system. So what I would recommend you to do is to spin up the real resource that you need to test this thing against. Let's say that is an API, let's use a, a mock server or something like that. If it's a database, let's use a container for that. And you write tests against this add a sync method to exercise that relationship. By the way, if you want to dig deeper into this approach, I have an NDC talk that I gave that I will link in the description. And an obvious benefit of doing this type of integration tests is that the tests that we were writing before were basically testing our assumptions on how that adapter works. If we do it in an integration test way, we'll not be checking our assumptions, but we'll be confirming that it works as it should be. So in a nutshell, we use the rule of thumb of not mocking anything that we don't own, 
And to do that, we use the concepts of adapters with the benefit that those adapters will give us interfaces that will define the relationship between our application and the external world. And by doing that, we are improving our design, we are improving our tests, we are improving our source code. Now that I have done that, I look into this arrange step and I still don't love it. And if you want to learn a way to improve this mocking definition, I invite you to take a look into this video right here. I will see you soon. In the meanwhile, keep it simple.